what needs to be paid. So let, let's go to the currency. Um, so, I mean, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a wise economics man, okay? Um, currency is a function of what? Domestic liquidity, mm -hmm. would you not say? Well, that, that's one of them. Okay, so, 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 yeah. so, so where we are already, I mean, like, I think what surprises people is the way in which we moved from when you took over, you know, at around, well, it was one to one, but even on the parallel rate, we were at about 2.4. Correct. To 10. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what's, and even your forecast before on inflation, I think you said we were at, it was going to stop at 80%, and we've gone past that. And, of course, it's driven in part by the parallel market pricing. Absolutely. But we've now, we've now got to 11 to 1. And if it is a function of liquidity, who's creating the liquidity? Well, there's a risk premium. So, so, so there are a lot of variables that drive the, the, the currency. One is, is your, your deficit issues. So we're, we're, we're not in a deficit position as of now. But uh, the, the Reserve other, Bank scenario, is that leaving aside that? I'll, I'll come to that. Okay. It, then is your, your current account situation. Again, that's under control. Then is your domestic liquidity, mm. which also is not uh, growing much. If it, there's no monetization deficit, so liquidity is, is, mm. is not, not growing. Uh, so, so then where is the demand coming from? I would say this is an issue of the risk premium. That players out there, they still associate our situation with some kind of risk premium, which they then add on to where the currency should. Yeah, we believe that the equilibrium should be somewhere between 4 and 5 to the US dollar in terms of exchange rate. But it requires but RTGS a, to buy that amount. You know what I mean? Like Indeed. There, there, there has to be that, that, that level of liquidity, that creation to pay 10 because there seems to be no shortage of demand at 10. So therefore you query, this is what people in the, in the, in the market say, you then query, where did the 1 to 10 come from? The, the amount, that quantum that has gone to, to 10, where has that liquidity come from? And, 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 I, I, I and also have to on. ask, it's not about liquidity, it's about what you are demanding to be paid for your for US dollars hard currency, even given the legal, legal liquidity that you have. So it's, it's a risk, mostly a risk premium issue. Because on a liquidity basis, the exchange rate is, is, it shouldn't be the 10. It should be half that, uh, absolute, on a pure liquidity basis. But, 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 but on but a risk but, premium basis, yeah. who knows what the market is adding. It's quite clear mm. that the market is adding quite a bit of a risk premium. And when we talk, the, talk to the players, that's what they are also telling me, mm. that the, 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 the high risk premium is partly the explanation for where the rate is. It shouldn't be at that level, in my view. Let's talk about the, the money at Forex, because that's what is mm. underlying this, this, this aspect of discussion. One of the things that is said often is that Zimbabwe doesn't have a shortage of right. resources. Right. We have a misallocation issue. So one of the things is when we look at surrender rates, a lot of people complain about surrender rates. Would it not be better for us to have a fixed model? For example, you give 10% of all the money that comes in to the authorized dealers, giving them capacity to be able to uh, have a market, create a market, and also take care of their own transactions. 20% goes to government. That 20% goes to government to take care of all the government needs that are required because we must accept that government has needs for forex, whether it's paper for passports, presidential travel, etc. There's a definite need. And then 70% that's not subject to surrender but goes into a market pool, which is a genuine free market pool. Because when we look at what we've been generating in terms of remittances, generating in terms of our exports, etc., there is a lot to be said that a country of our size, relative to other countries, is actually generating enough forex. Absolutely. It's the model that's wrong. Absolutely, we're generating enough forex. Uh, uh, yes, we can argue that maybe is the model, but also there's just an issue of confidence that we need market players to be. You know, we have some confidence in the financial system, and that confidence level is rising over time. It's certainly not going down, it's rising over time. Uh, and also, I think some of the, the action we have taken using SI 142, make sure this Zimbabwe dollar is a sole legal tender, is helping in building that confidence, and the demand for domestic currency goes up. But, but going back to the surrender uh, rate issue, we, you can see that over time we are, we, are, we, are, we are going to change that ratio and move closer to 100% as possible. But it will take time. Why? We still have other commitments in terms of uh, forex requirements. I, I, I've understood the proposal you have made. It's one of the proposals. It's one of the proposals. Uh, but, but really the intention over time is to make sure that there is no surrender. <laughs> you know, there is 100% retention by the, by the exporter. That's a desirable position, but we're not there yet. We'll get there. We're going through a transition. Uh, we'll get there.
to talk about confidence minister one of the things